Hey guys, my name is Ankush Gaurav and I welcome you to Contu series. In the earlier tutorial, we learned the meaning of one-to-one -one mapping in general and then understood how to do it at Java code level using Hibernate. Now in this tutorial, we're going to learn some important points about one-to-one -one mapping which we didn't learn so far. We will learn what's the real use of a one-to-one -one mapping. What is a cascade type and how is it related to a one-to-one -one mapping? What is a unidirectional and bidirectional one-to-one -one mapping? Let's start. One-to-one -one mapping or a relationship you establish between two tables in a database. One table becomes parent and the other one becomes child. And then you do the same thing at Java code level, that is in your Hibernate classes. But a big question will always haunt you or confuse you when you already established one-to-one -one relationship between two tables in a database using a foreign key reference or a constraint, then why again doing the same thing in your Java classes? In simple words, why is it needed to establish a one-to-one -one relationship at Java code level? If you are establishing this relationship at Java code level, then you are explicitly telling Hibernate that one class which is representing student detail is actually a child class and the other class which is representing the student table is actually a parent class. In the main class, here you are creating a child object, a parent object and assigning the reference of a parent object to the child object and in the end you are just saving the child object and when you run this application hibernate will insert a record into the child and parent table that is in both the tables and that's what we saw in the earlier tutorial if you observe here two important things are happening when you run this application while saving a record into the child table hibernate will itself take care of mapping the child record with its matching record in the parent table. So technically, what I'm seeing here is, while saving the child object, Hibernate will insert the parent object first. And whatever value of student ID it is going to generate for the parent object, it will use the same value of student ID for the child object for inserting the child record. Hibernate is able to perform this mapping task itself only because you established this relationship at the Java code level. And the second point is, in the main class, you are just saving a record in the child table. But Hibernate not just inserted a record into the child table, but also inserted a record into the parent table. Which means, if you have this relationship established at Java code level, then an operation performed on a child object in Java code will also result in performing all desired tasks related to the parent object which it refers. In this demo, I just showed it for an insert operation. But the same concept is applicable for a delete and an update operations too. Think of a situation if you wouldn't have established a one-to-one -one mapping in Java classes. Then you would have to perform both these things yourself in the code and your code in the main class might have looked like this. So using a one-to-one -one mapping concept, you can do more things with less code. And at the same time, you make your code more readable and more logical. For the second point, I'm sure you're gonna ask me a question. When you are performing an operation on a child record, you may or you may not always want Hibernate to perform an action automatically on the matching record of the parent table. And that's where the cascade type property of one-to-one -one mapping comes into the picture. Using the cascade feature of one-to-one -one mapping concept, you can control it the way you want. If you notice here in the demo, for establishing a one-to-one -one mapping between a child and a parent class, I simply created a reference of a parent class in the child class. And on top of it, I put a one-to-one -one annotation. 
Now with this annotation, you have an option to specify the cascade type property like I did here. So what it does is, if you keep its value as all as I've done here, then Hibernate will support this auto feature not just for insert operation only, but also for other operations that is update and delete operations too. For some reasons, if you don't want Hibernate to perform an auto action on the parent table for action performed on the child table, then you don't specify this cascade property at all. And if you want this cascade feature to work only for delete operation and not for insert and update operations, then keep its value as remove. Likewise, if you want this cascade feature to work only for insert operation, then keep its value as persist. These other values for a cascade type property are a kind of advanced topics which I'm going to cover in later tutorials in this series. Non-important thing to know about one-to-one -one mapping. So far, you established a one-to-one -one mapping which is a unidirectional one-to-one -one mapping. Meaning, an operation performed on a child table will automatically result in all required changes to the matching records in the parent table and that's what we just saw. But here, the reverse of it is not possible. That is, if you write code to perform an operation on the parent table, then Hibernate is just going to perform an operation on the parent record and will not perform any sort of action on its related child records in the child table. So if you want this auto feature from both sides, then some additional code you will need to write in the student class. Here, just add the student detail class reference with its getters and setters method. And on top of it, just mention that student class is having a one-to-one -one relationship with the student detail class with the syntax and you are done. So with the syntax, you have just established bidirectional one-to-one -one mapping. That is a mapping from both sides of the classes. Let's see it running. In the earlier tutorial, I inserted a record in the child table and Hibernate automatically inserted a record in parent as well. Now with these changes, which I just made, I can do the reverse. I will insert a record into the parent table and Hibernate should automatically insert a record in child table 2. Let's see it running. Yes, Hibernate has inserted a record in the parent table and also in the child table. There are many other important things which I have not discussed up till now, like establishing a one-to-one -one mapping for the parent and child tables like this, or in case where Hibernate will use a third table for mapping parent and child records, and some of the advanced level cascade type options, which I'll cover in later tutorials in Hibernate series. In the next tutorial, we will learn what is a one-to-many or a many-to-one relationship. Guys, a big thank you for liking my tutorials. Your feedback and comments make me upload more and more tutorials. So keep them up. Please like this video if it really helped you. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Conto Series. And I'm going to catch you in my next tutorial.